You know, one of the wonderful things that happens to people who have been hurt deeply or who have lived in poverty or through abuse in their childhood or uh, through various traumas and so forth, is if you can gather those people together into an environment where they are loved, that love works in them miracles. I've seen it. I've seen it in people very close to me. I've seen it in people I hardly knew. And I've seen the same thing happen. Is that love, God's love, channeled through us, Sorry about that. Forgot to turn it off. God's love channeled through us reaches out to people who are in need and that love is healing. That love is strengthening. That love gives people the opportunity to grow. You know, we're called as parents, those of us who are parents here, we're called to love our children. That's so important. There are so many people that I have as a pastor counseled and spoken to. They're my age, really, really old. And they are carrying burdens of hurt from when they were a child. And God's love hasn't penetrated there yet. The effect that we have as parents on our children is profound. And it can be profoundly wonderful as we share God's love. And it can be profoundly horrible if we are not sharing God's love. Now the wonderful thing about this is God's love covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> and I'm so glad for that. Because I wasn't a perfect father. I'm still not a perfect father. But God's grace and mercy has been demonstrated over my failings. But how important that is. That ministry to your children. Wow. And I'm realizing... You know, I forget who it was I was talking to recently. It was saying young kids and kind of a struggle. And yeah, yeah, but you know, when they're 18, that, you know, then they'll be on their own. And I said, I'm popping that bubble right now, buddy. <laughs> they will be your children forever. And you'll love it and enjoy it and be broken hearted over it and all of those things. It's just different. It's just different. But that love of God, you see, one of the messages of the entire scripture in, again, that kind of summary idea of things is that God can show us the difference between right and wrong. And he can warn us that if you live right, you will be blessed. And if you live wrong, you will be cursed. And he can demonstrate that. And he can demonstrate that at a national level, at an international level, at a personal, at a family level. He can demonstrate that over years, centuries, millennia. And he did. And that alone is not enough for us to be able to live as he has called us to. But what can make us live as God has called us to, as He intended us to be from the day He created Adam and Eve in the garden? His love. His love. And His love is demonstrated in this, that Christ died for our sins. That God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but have eternal life, John 3, 16. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, and I would put in parentheses there my own words, as the world deserves, but that the world through Him might be saved. 
You see, it's God's love that reached out to me. It was God's love that made me as a long-haired hippie who had gotten saved to walk into a church of very straight-laced, blue-collar, anti-hippie people who were weird as far as I was concerned in the way they were doing church. But it was their love that made me stay and go back and go back and go back. It was their love through God. It was the love of a young couple who over a year's worth of time, while I made fun of them and joked with them and maligned them for their faith and with some power because I knew some stuff about the Bible I could throw in their face. It was their love over that year that cut through to my heart to say, there's something different here. There's something different here. It's God's love through Jesus Christ that saves us. And it is God's love demonstrated through us to others that declares the message of Christmas all year long to others. That it's not just a charity I give to in December, but it is my calling in life to give what I have and to give it not to be a philanthropist hmm, and take pride in that, but to give because everything I have I've been given, so how can I not give to you and give out of the love of Jesus Christ that's been shed abroad in my heart. Giving and loving. To me, that's what Christmas really is at its heart. That's why agnostics and atheists celebrate Christmas because they want love. They don't want Jesus. They don't want God. But they want love. And they want to know that there's something good in this world that is worth giving to and receiving from. The sad part is they're so far removed from the truth of what Christmas is really all about. One more scripture. Turn to the gospel in between the two you've been in, the gospel of Mark, chapter 8 this time. Gospel of Mark, chapter 8. Verse 